So I'm sure by now most people know about the Big Bang Theory, the theory that the universe started from a single point of infinite density and mass, which then expanded into the universe we know today and continues to expand to this very day at an accelerated rate, which right now is currently calculated at 73 kilometers per second per megaparsec. But recently, while looking at this theory again and reading NASA and other articles about the theory, many scientists have, for a while, questioned the Big Bang as a theory. And in science, the Big Bang theory is just a theory as it says, and a theory in science is a well-substantiated explanation of a natural phenomenon based on a large body of evidence gathered through repeated observation and experimentation. So what that basically means is that science always has room for improvement, it always has room to change or tweak certain things that don't work based on new discoveries, new tests, new experiments, all that. And obviously, we have only just begun to understand how the universe works, so it could be completely wrong or it could be partially wrong. However, that got me thinking about what actual alternative theories, even if they're ridiculous, do we have about the origins of the universe. So, I've compiled a small list of theories I found around the internet that are alternatives to the Big Bang. I tried to find some really ridiculous ones, but it was a little hard to actually find ones that weren't basically saying the same thing, but reworded. It seems like a lot of these theories either relate to a Big Bounce, which I'll talk about later, or religious explanations. It would be interesting to make a part 2 of this though, so if anyone has any crazy theories about the origin of the universe, then please let me know. So this seemed to be the most popular theory before the Big Bang and the second alternative theory to it. The steady state universe theory is a theory that the universe has always been in existence and has continued to expand infinitely while maintaining a constant average density, which allows the creation of infinite matter and thus stars, galaxies, planets, and everything we see, which apparently occurs at the same rate that older matter becomes unobservable as the universe expands. Putting it simply, the universe has no age at all, and has always been and always will be, infinitely existing for eternity. This theory is pretty hard to comprehend in itself, because the human mind could never fully comprehend the idea of infinity, and it's hard to fathom the idea that the universe could have always existed, though, like the Big Bang, there's issues with this theory which is why the Big Bang is favored over it. To start. The discovery of the Cosmic Microwave Background Radiation, or CMB, in 1965 basically proved to everyone that in the very distant past, which would have been either a short time after the Big Bang or a short time before it, the universe was extremely hot and dense, and its cooling over time proves that the universe has in fact changed over time. Another problem with the steady state theory is how exactly new matter is being infinitely created if there's no physical mechanism that would allow that. Because this theory suggests that new matter is constantly emerging in space to allow the creation of new galaxies, planets, stars, and everything, but it doesn't exactly explain how this occurs. And if there's no actual reason this occurs, then it violates the conservation of energy law, as well as certain principles in quantum mechanics and thermodynamics. The cyclical universe theory is a theory that proposes the idea that the universe infinitely repeats itself in a cycle of big bangs and big crunches. If you don't know what the big crunch is, it's the idea that as the universe continues to expand, gravity and dark energy will constantly be playing this cosmic tug of war with the universe's expansion, and currently, from what we know right now, dark energy is winning by a long shot. The universe's ultimate fate according to NASA is dependent on its density, that is if matter in the universe has low pressure, which is the case with most forms of known matter. If the universe has a lower density than that of its critical density, then the universe expands forever and it dies in ice. However, some scientists theorize that the density of the universe is actually greater than the critical density, which could eventually lead to gravity winning the tug of war and causing the universe to essentially collapse back in on itself. And that's the entire idea with the cyclical universe theory, is that it will end in a big crunch and begin again in a big bang. Essentially, it's saying what the last theory did, that the universe has infinitely existed, however, it fixes many problems with the steady state theory, 
but that doesn't mean this theory doesn't have issues. The main issue is entropy, which the laws of thermodynamic states can never decrease, and entropy is extremely confusing to understand, so I'll do the best I can to explain it. Entropy is typically described as randomness, disorder, and uncertainty in the universe, but the more complicated, simplified explanation I can give is that it's the amount of energy in a system while also describing its direction. Big props to my brother who is an engineer for helping me with that shit. But I'm going to read this explanation word for word instead of putting it into my own words because I think you guys will understand it better. In a simple cyclic universe model, the entropy of any given universe must be at least greater than its parent universe. So if universes cycle to an infinite past, the current universe would have infinite entropy, which it doesn't. So there must have been some initial universe with low entropy, and we're back to the beginning. So I think we've all heard of this theory, especially for those of you who have seen The Matrix. But if some of you don't know about it, the simulation theory is basically the idea that our reality takes place within a computer simulation and that we are just NPCs or some kind of avatars slash constructs within it. And the scariest part about this theory is it's not even a ridiculous assumption to have. And recently, a research astronomer working at Columbia University named David Kipping used Bostrom's theory to come to the conclusion that it's a 50-50 chance. And in doing some more research, most scientists agree on those odds. Now, there's a few problems with the simulation hypotheses, just like all these theories, and it mostly comes down to both consciousness and how advanced a computer can actually be. You see, while we have only begun to invent some crazy technology, we don't actually know if there's any limit to how advanced it can be. Lots of hypothetical technologies such as warp drives, teleportation, backwards time travel, and even the power to simulate a universe within a universe aren't exactly proven and there's many refutes against why they might be impossible. And the fact that we're conscious within the simulation is either a glitch, on purpose, or it may prove that it's not a simulation. However, those are also what-ifs, so to me this whole theory along with its refuse are based on odds and what-ifs. The holographic universe theory, as the name suggests, is the idea that the universe and reality we live in is actually a hologram. Now, this isn't some conspiracy theory where people are saying that the government put up a hologram, it's more saying that the reality we live in actually exists within a distant coded two-dimensional surface. I'll be re-quoting the professor of theoretical physics at SITP, Leonard Susskind, who I believe explains this theory perfectly. The three-dimensional world of ordinary experience, the universe filled with galaxies, stars, planets, houses, boulders, and people, is a hologram an image of reality coded on a distant two-dimensional surface. It's basically saying that the universe is encoded with information on a plane similar to the bits and bytes that make up a computer code, which fixes a certain paradox when it comes to information slipping into a black hole. You see, if information can neither be lost nor destroyed, then once the black hole evaporates and emits radiation containing only some of the information that originally fell into it, then that violates quantum mechanics. This is the idea around the black hole information paradox and the holographic universe principle is one of the theories that fixes this issue. The holographic principle states that when information falls into a black hole, an object can never cross the event horizon due to the natural limit of the speed of light as well as gravitational time dilation which would cause time from the perspective of an observer to stop at the event horizon. And since any change in quantum state requires time to flow, then any information would stay imprinted on the event horizon. The holographic universe theory states that the entropy of a black hole is directly proportional to the area of the event horizon. However, applying this logic to the rest of the universe is a subject of debate among scientists.
In string theory, a brain is essentially a multi-dimensional object that exists within a higher nine-dimensional plane which can have any number of allowed dimensions. Some scientists theorize that our universe is a three-dimensional brain existing on a larger nine-dimensional space which we can't perceive. Now, it's very possible that our brain could be existing among other brains, and the collision theory proposes that the collision of two brains could produce such immense energy that it could cause a big bang to occur. So this theory states that our universe was created from a brain collision that resulted in the big bang. Now, this theory is very hypothetical, but basically it states that our brain is restricted inside a higher dimensional space called the bulk, and also known as hyperspace, and that when our brain interacts with hyperspace or other brains, it can influence effects seen in our reality such as the apparent weakness of gravity and the cosmological constant problem. However, currently, we have found no direct evidence of higher dimensions or brains for that matter, and there also seems to be an issue with explaining the actual uniformity of the universe with this theory, because it's not actually known if such a collision could evenly distribute matter as we see on such a large scale in the universe. When observing the galaxy filament of the universe, that is, the cosmic web of galaxies, and then looking at the network of neurons in a human brain, you may find some scary structural resemblances. This is the idea when it comes to the cosmic brain theory, that we may be living as a merely subatomic particle in the brain of an entity whose size alone would be incomprehensible to us. And if we're talking about this logically, the largest galaxy filament ever discovered, named the Hercules Corona Borealis Great Wall, was estimated at 10 billion light years in length. For perspective, our solar system from the outer Oort cloud to the sun is approximately 3.2 light years which, with our current fastest man-made object, would be able to leave the solar system in the range of 30 to 40,000 years. This also poses the question of consciousness. If the universe has such a similar structure to that of a brain neuron network, is it possible that the universe could be conscious? This really gets into the realm of philosophical ideas and Lovecraftian concepts, and perhaps this is just another example of the universe being entirely infinite. Eventually, with infinity, you would come to a certain point where what you saw began to repeat itself. In the idea of an infinite universe, you may be able to travel so far within it that eventually, you may land on a region of space with an exact copy of Earth and the solar system with an exact copy of you living there with other exact copies of all other humans on it. We could take this to the filament idea and ask ourselves, is the structure so similar because it's an example of a repeating pattern that would occur within an infinite universe? Perhaps brain neurons in galaxy filaments ran out of ways to be uniquely designed, which had them take on similar appearances. Of course, this is all highly speculative and very, very unproven, and to test such an idea is out of the realm of possibility right now. There's not much scientific evidence to support the idea that we are living inside a giant brain as subatomic particles, but it's a fun and scary idea nonetheless.